In this video, we're gonna be talking about how being successful is rooted in failure. And this is one of the reasons that so many people are seduced and taken advantage of with these easy how to make a lot of money programs and advertisements because no one really talks about the process. And essentially, you will fail quite a bit on your path to success. And I'm here to talk about it and I'm here to let you know what is part of the true path to success. This video is sponsored by the Corporate Toolbox. The link is below where we will teach you how to start, structure, and scale your business. Now, let's go ahead and talk about failure. And this is something that I've talked about in the past, but I haven't talked about it in recent years. And essentially, let's talk about my storage auction days. When I first got started, I went out and I had no clue to what I was doing. And I did not know how storage auctions work. My first few months were very, very frustrating because I was getting bad units. I didn't understand what I needed to do. And then one day a light kind of went off on my head that I needed to fight for the better units because when you're new, people will bid you up. And there's this one unit, I paid like $450 for it. You know, in the beginning, I was kind of like, why did I do that? But I got in the unit and I made $3,000 off that $450 spend. And I was like, oh, this is how this works. You've got to take chances. Now, one of the things I was known for was buying trash units. What are trash units? They are disposable, sometimes they're stinky units. And I would consistently buy these units because the ROI was always much higher than what I spent. I would get these units for a dollar, five dollars. In some cases, I would get them free. So if I got it free, any money I made was pure profit. And I began to get a feel after about going on my second year. This is when I began to get my feel for buying units. And it's a process. And th this is the thing that so many people don't understand. Becoming successful is a acclimation process of trial and error and error and being stuck to it. Cause see, this is one of the things that I consistently get on YouTube that is very, very frustrating. Hey Glendon, what do you have for me that I can make six to nine to $10,000 within three months from now? And I, I, keep, I tell the people the same thing. I have nothing for you. This is one of the things that is so frustrating being an online educator is that you have people who do not want to become an apprentice or a technician of anything. They're looking for super fast solutions to complex problems. If you have been poor for many, many years, that is a complex problem that is rooted in the way that you were raised, that's rooted in your social economic circle. There are so many things that contribute to you being poor that you have so many people who are trying to find an immediate solution to solve a long-term chronic problem. One of the things that people have got to understand, success is not an overnight journey. Essentially, like I became a millionaire selling a digital product. Did it happen in one year? No. Did it happen in two years? No. It happened in three years, 36 months, which for me being a business owner and actually running a business almost for a decade and never becoming a millionaire, that was crazy fast. And you know, I have people here who are making $30,000 a year who feel that it's too long to get to $100,000 a year in three years. That's too long, it takes too much time. Here's the thing, we are human, right? And each day that we live, we get a little older. Each day that you're on the earth, you get older and older, which means the time is passing. And also, let's talk about windows. Typically, your window to make a lot of money is between your 20s and your 50s. Now, why is that? This is something that I am starting to see with my peer group. I am 53 years old. I am beginning to see things happen with my friends who are also in their 50s. I'm not going through it because I'm pushing against it. I'm still working, I'm still building. But as a human, at some point, this is going to hit me as well. And there is a point when you get to a certain age, you just don't have the energy 
you just don't have the ability, you just don't have that drive to go out and build something. So you gotta do this between your 20s and your 50s. And my first million came, I was 40 something. So I was still well within my range. And also because I've worked out, and I've been very active. I've kind of pushed that to the back because, you know, I'm 54. Like, I'll, I'll tell you, today I took a nap. You know, I worked out for the last three days. It, it's a rainy day in Georgia. It was a perfect day for a nap. And this is one of the things that I do when I get to a certain point where I get tired. I'll just take a nap. I'll take a rest. I'll take a day off. And one of the things that you've got to understand, this is biology. See, this is why I push on my young guys to really go out and start their businesses, build their empires, slay their dragons. Because Miss Sally Mae Jones, a neighbor of mine when I was growing up, she used to say this, if you live long enough, you're gonna be old. And she used to always say that. And it is the reality of the situation. And there are many people out there who are wasting time trying to secure the bag without working. And like, let's talk about my Craigslist protocols. It took me months of writing ads and getting feedback and failing. I was failing. I was writing ads that were getting no response. Let's talk about the Craigslist marketing system. It took me about two years to dial that in. And I was writing ads every day and it was getting a little bit better each day. Cause see, if you can start something and you can get a little bit better each day, you are winning. But we have so many people who are uncertain that if they do the work, they're gonna get results. This is a big, big issue. This is a big, big problem. That so many people are afraid to put forth the effort to do something. I'm here to tell you, there are times that you're gonna work on some stuff really hard and it's not gonna work. And that's a learning lesson. I have created courses that did not sell. I have made videos that no one's watched. Some point I was like, okay, that didn't work. That's my response. Not to quit, not to stop, not to pull up, not to look for one of these super simple, easy uh, pathways to make money. This is why day trading and Forex are so large because if you win, you win big. But both of them have a 90 something percent failure rate. But we have people who are jumping into it, who are trying to do options trading. Options trading is extremely risky. And if you're gonna become good at options trading, you're gonna lose money. That is part of the learning process. If you're gonna become a successful Forex trader, you're gonna lose money. If you're gonna become a successful day trader, you're gonna lose money. And this is the big, big problem that people don't wanna pay their dues. Like I've had many people it's like, hey, maybe you should try Forex and all this other stuff. I don't think people understand my orientation. I don't think people understand how I am built. I grew up in the 70s where it was expected that as a young man that I would find something productive to do. It was an expectation. I was operating in an environment where if I went ahead and pulled out my lawnmower and went and cut some people's lawns and got some money, I was doing well. It was an expectation that was supported by the environment. I do what I needed to do, I got rewarded. Now, there are many men today that don't operate in that environment. There are many men who are really confused about what their first move should be. And I'm here to tell you, you need to be gainfully employed, you need to be productive, and you need to be working on building something. One of the big issues that we have is we have a lot of people who are looking for self-indulgent wealth. What is self-indulgent wealth? Forex, day trading. It is our only fans where you just do little to nothing and you have a big payday. Right now, OnlyFans is going through the roof and it is, you know, I may do a video on this for Disruptive Male, it is simpology. You have a bunch of men who are paying these women outrageous sums of money for doing absolutely nothing. And this is the mentality that we have. This is where we are as a society. We have a, a bunch of people who are rent seeking. Rent seeking is getting paid for not 
bringing any value to the table. And this is one of the things. And at some point, this is going to shift. And if you're trying to rent seek, you're trying to get paid for what without creating value, without building something, you're going to be more than likely very disappointed. Now, one of the things that I want to bring to you, if you want to start a business, I'm here to tell you in the beginning, it's going to be rough. You're not going to get the results that you want. Not in the beginning, because there are so many things that you have to learn. There are so many things that you have to do. There are so many things that you have to set up. This is one of the things that I pride myself on is being honest with you. You're looking at a two to three year journey of starting your business, getting it established, it, serving your customers and making money, which is very, very fast. But because you're used to going to work, working two weeks, getting a check, that is your environment. That is your feedback loop. I go to work for two weeks, I get a check. Doesn't work like that in business. So this is part of the retraining and the reorientation that I'm talking about. For the longest times, I used to calculate how much money I was making on a 160 hour work week. This is what like, I would take what I would made and I divide it by 160. And then one day it's like, why are you doing this? Because I was so indoctrinated in that feedback loop, that feedback loop of going to work and getting remuneration in two weeks or some cases every week. And this is such a big part of starting a business. Like right now, I don't take a regular salary. It's kind of funny because I'm getting ready to put myself on salary once my AdSense gets to a certain level. And this, this will be the first time in years that I will be having a regular paycheck. This is how I go ahead and establish this because unfortunately for me, I make a lot of money. And essentially what I would do is take the money from the previous year, put this in my checking account, and that's what I would live on. So it doesn't really matter what my monthly income was because I have this huge sum of money in my checking account that I live off. So I'm not even worried about it like this month because essentially, let me go ahead and this is a financial lesson for you entrepreneurs. I have a holding company, I have two operating companies, I'm getting ready to create a third operating company. Now, this is what is happening with my operating company. All of the money that I have made for the month of September is still in the checking account of the operating company. Yeah, I, I haven't touched that. And the money that I'm gonna get from the YouTube business and I'm going to start uh, doing uh, sponsorships, that's gonna be in another checking account. I'm not gonna touch that. Once a month, I'm gonna move that money from my operating companies to my holding companies. And then once a month, I'm going to move that money from my holding company to the new operating company. Now, this is how you get ahead in life, having practical financial discipline. Cause you know, I'm, I could easily pay myself once a month and do just fine. I've got that level of financial discipline. And fortunately for me, I make a very good income. But once again, the pathway to success and wealth is money management. I just told you that I've got a lot of money in the operating account. It is September, the middle of September. I have not touched that money. And this is one of the reasons that so many people fail at entrepreneurship is they can't keep their hands out of the bank. Many good companies that have failed because the owner was dipping into the till too much. So essentially what you want to do is create a situation where you have proper money management protocols. Because once you put those into play, and part of this is I'm not in debt. I have no debt. This makes it very easy for me to make the moves that I'm moving because my money comes in and it's stacked. My money doesn't come in and then immediately go out to a car note, credit card payment, student loan payment. It, it, it doesn't do that. And this is where I want you to be. This is why on Savage Finance, I consistently talk about getting out of debt, establishing your long-term emergency fund, establishing your short-term emergency fund, a family operating account, because I'm getting ready to talk about some stuff that I do that is so different than the radical norm out there, because essentially 
I have enough money in my personal checking account to live out the rest of the year and not touch any of my business income. How did this happen? I've learned from my failures. I've learned from my mistakes in the past. I've never really had super bad money management habits. I never had like a habit or was doing drugs or something like this. I never had those types of situations. However, there are some things that I did that were not in the best interest of money. And I've learned from those mistakes. And this is one of the things, if you save money, and there are many videos that's like, stop saving money, you should become an investor. But none of those videos talk about the preparation phase of building a long-term emergency fund, a short-term emergency fund, a long-term emergency fund, getting out of debt. Then at that point, this is when you become an investor. Because if you try to become an investor, and there are many videos that talk about becoming an investor while you're in deep in debt, and if you sit down with a pencil and paper and do the math, you will find out that you're not getting ahead doing it that way. And this is one of the reasons that I talk about failure. If you want to have a successful business, you're gonna have failure. You're gonna have issues. You're going to have trials and tribulations. And this is part of the grooming process of becoming a competent entrepreneur because so many people are looking for lightning quick success because of the environment of going to work and in two weeks you get a check. This is one of the biggest transformations you're gonna have to make when you leave the employed world and become self-employed. You got to money, manage your money totally differently. You're gonna to have to do some things very, very differently. And part of that is learning from your mistakes. And this is one of the biggest issues that we, we have in the world today is that people don't want to become apprentice. They don't want to become craftsmen. They don't want to do what they need to do to become successful. Because I have learned, I've had many products that failed. And through that failure, I learned how to design successful products. Give you an example. I used to come out with many, many different products. I used to uh, try to sell them too fast. I would jack up the price too quick. I've learned, and this is something I learned from Disruptive Mail, that if you have just a handful of products, not a bunch of products, because that's one of the issues with Hustlers Kung Fu. There's too many products. And this is what I learned from Hustlers Kung Fu, which was financially successful, but it could have been more successful. Like this is where B-School for Hustlers comes into play. B-School for Hustlers has a limited number of products. It has a well-defined starting place. And I'm gonna make millions of dollars from B-School from Hustlers with the number of products that I have because I'm not adding any more products. See, th this is one of the issues and this is one of the things I have learned through failure. They're adding too many products, adjusting prices too quickly. This is all stuff that I learned from failure which has led to greater success. But once again, there are many people who don't understand. They, you know, I, I keep saying this, but you don't know what you don't know. And when you begin to design a business, there will be failure. There will be shortcomings. There will be mistakes. And this is good because this is gonna teach you how to design a successful business. My expectations for B-School for Hustlers and the corporate toolbox, what's gonna happen in the next five years with that program is gonna be staggering. But I would not be here, I wouldn't have the knowledge I have if it wasn't for the failure. I would not know. And there are so many folks who are afraid to fail and I'm telling you, it is in your best interest to fail. So that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully you should watch this video two to three times so you fully get it. And I will see you in the next video, which will be right here.